Amanda Bynes turns down the opportunity to be on Quiet on Set. How's it going today, folks? So we talked a lot about Drake Bell exposing the Nickelodeon crew on the TV series Quiet on Set, but we haven't talked a lot about Drake's co-star Amanda Bynes. Huge in the 90s. She was on the show All That from 1996 to 2000, all the way up to 1991 where she hosted her own show called The Amanda Show which is where she worked with Drake Bell. You're part of your my sister. <laughs> So a lot of people analyzed the time Amanda and Dan spent over the years and sort of came to their own conclusions that there was some creepy behavior that they seen of Dan and Amanda being just a little too close on set. One person posting this video of Dan and Amanda in a hot tub saying disturbing footage resurfaces of child abuser Dan Schneider in a hot tub with a 16 year old Amanda Bynes on the set of the Amanda show following the release of the most explosive Nickelodeon expose docuseries Quiet on set that released last night. Hi, my special guest is the executive producer of the Amanda Show, Dan Schneider. Hi. Now, you're the executive producer of the show? Uh, yeah, I'm the executive producer and I'm the head writer. So, it's pretty clear that it's kind of creepy for a grown man to be in a hot tub with a 16-year-old in a bathing suit. In the 90s, there was a lot of sus behavior, things that were either riding the line or just a little bit beyond the line of creepy. But besides the creepiness, it was very clear that Amanda Bynes was a mega talent, playing so many characters on her show. And this is why Dan Schneider gravitated towards her. Amanda was really the star actor for Nickelodeon for a long time, just due to how amazing her personality was and how quirky she was on camera. But then as time went on, it was clear that Amanda's mental health was declining. She was gaining weight, rebelling, doing this weird thing with her eyebrows and this heart tattoo on her face, and just talking a lot of gobbledygook. <laughs> She had a long history of substance abuse, mental health issues, running into the law several times, driving under the influence, reckless endangerment, marijuana possession, starting a fire in her driveway, her parents even filing for a conservatorship of her. Amanda accused her parents of sexual abuse and emotional abuse, saying the police filed a report against my dad. I'm not able to be in the same room with him. He is a predator and he should be in jail but it's hard to tell if any of these things were actually true as she sobered up and ended up apologizing for a lot of her mistakes saying i'm really ashamed and embarrassed with the things i said i can't turn back time but if i could i would and i'm sorry to whoever i hurt and whoever i lied about because it truly eats away at me. Eventually she ended up cleaning up and doing better and even ended her conservatorship in 2022. But then in 2023, the cops were called on her after she had a psychotic episode after roaming in the streets naked. So it's clear there's a lot of mental health issues coming from Amanda Bynes. And people are wondering like, is it the parents? Was it a natural cause? Does this have something to do with Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider? There's no verification for this, but one person said, didn't Amanda Bynes have a secret account on Twitter back in 2014-ish claiming Dan Schneider essayed her, impregnated her, and forced her to get an abortion. And this is the account. Her making tweets like exposing the truth and then having your freedom threatened. Can you imagine having an abortion at 13 because your boss impregnated you? Committed because your father touched you? They won. I must do everything they say in order to keep my freedom. I'm sorry. This is just another ploy and scare tactic for them to keep my money forever. I've been forced to deny this account to prevent them from having me committed against my will. Again. Now there's no way for us to confirm if that account is real. And there's also no way for us to tell if she was really a or it was part of the psychotic episode she was going through. But by some of the evidence, we've definitely seen Dan Schneider being a little bit too close with his child cast. So commentator Candace Owens had this to say about Amanda Bynes. She's the man. She also played two different characters, one disguised as a guy and the other one disguised as a girl. Imagine what that is doing to somebody who is young having to play these roles. She also had the Amanda, Amanda Bynes show where she played a variety of different individuals, Night in and night out. She played a woman named Melody Tate, Judge Tariq, Lonnie Loki, Amber, Doreen, Cynthia Worthington, Louie, Crazy Courtney, Candy Tulips, Katie Klutz, Lula May, Cindy Extreme, Sharon, Melody, Mother Caboose, Babs, Russellberg, and people and the people placed on her. Imagine you, an entire show being centered around you playing a bunch of different characters all in one show, and you are a child. So Candace Owens goes on to make the point that as a kid, 
when you're playing so many personalities and being rambunctious on camera and never truly being yourself for most of your full-time career. It can have a toll on your mental health. It could possibly make you have development issues. There's a lot of stress that goes into being rambunctious on camera all day, every day, in and out. So, you know, say what you want about Candace Owens, but I think that's a decent point. Now we get to the actual main story here, which is Amanda Bynes turning down the quiet on set interview, saying it was nothing like her own experience. So Amanda Bynes isn't interested in talking about her child star past because she simply didn't have a bad experience. Apparently her parents, Rick and Lynn, were approached about telling their story on quiet on set but opted not to participate. They said that they didn't watch the documentary, declined the interview, didn't have anything to share. Sources say Amanda was grateful what she was able to do with her Nickelodeon start, and she acknowledges that it launched her career back then. So it is really interesting to see that after this documentary came out and how so many kids had issues with Dan Schneider, the parents haven't really delved anywhere deep into the idea that maybe their daughter was being groomed, or maybe the fact that Dan was a little too close with their daughter. But it is surprising considering Amanda lashed out at her own parents, saying that her father did this and that, but she has nothing to say about Dan. Who knows, maybe because she was the star of the show, they gave her better treatment. Maybe nothing happened. I do think personally though, that the show took a toll on her mental health. I think being a child actor was what destroyed her ultimately, but that's just my opinion. But anyway, guys, that is the news for today. Fun fact, the Eiffel Tower gets taller in the summer. And you guys know the drill. Ta-ta for now.